Hey, this is Aftar. I'm a developer advocate here at Timescale. And in this video, I'm going to take you through PromScale, a new open source long-term store for Prometheus metrics that's designed for analytics. PromScale scales and augments Prometheus for long-term storage and analytics, making it easy to perform sophisticated queries on your monitoring data. It also offers the combined power of SQL and PromQL, enabling you to ask any question, create any dashboard, and achieve greater visibility into the systems that you monitor. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick intro to PromScale and perform an example of an advanced analytical query uh, demonstrating the unique value that PromScale can add to your monitoring endeavors. And I'm going to demonstrate that using uh, an example that I've set up for you. So let's jump straight in. The example is as, as follows. So what I have is a application running in Kubernetes consisting of a, a bunch of microservices. It's actually an e-commerce application. And so I've got things like a currency service and a checkout service and, and a bunch of other things um, all running in this, in this Kubernetes uh, cluster. In order to monitor that service, what I have is uh, a bunch of components set up here, one of which is PromScale. So I'm using PromScale here, and alongside PromScale is Prometheus, which is actually uh, scraping the metrics uh, and collecting the metrics from the Kubernetes cluster, but also from all the applications running inside it. And I also have TimescaleDB. For those of you who are new to TimescaleDB, TimescaleDB is a relational database for time series data built on top of Postgres. You can think of it like Postgres for time series. And how do these components interact together is the next question we're going to answer. Now, Prometheus uses PromScale as a remote write, storing the data in TimescaleDB. And PromScale actually understands PromQL queries natively and fetches data from TimescaleDB to execute them, while the SQL queries go directly to TimescaleDB and are executed directly there. So now that we have an overview of how PromScale fits into a monitoring system, let's actually see how to perform a SQL query using PromScale. So what I'm going to do is just clear my terminal and connect to my TimescaleDB instance. OK, so the main thing here is that once installed alongside Prometheus, PromScale automatically generates an optimized schema which allows you to efficiently query your metrics using SQL. Now, the good thing is that you don't have to worry about how this schema is organized. You just interact with metrics and labels through views which have been automatically set up. Now, each metric and label has its own view, and you can view a list of labels and metrics by querying the prom underscore info dash metric underscore info dot metric view as well as a prom underscore info dot label view. So let's take a look at these views right now. So what I'm doing here is just uh, selecting three um, records from the prom underscore info dot metric view. So this is going to show me information about the, all the metrics that I've collected, things like the ID, the metric name, but also important information about how I'm actually storing this uh, data about this metric in timescale DB, things like the retention period, things like the size on disk and the compression ratio. And you can see this is uh, could actually be different for each metric. So this actually highlights a benefit of PromScale, which is isolation between metrics. It allows you to set different retention periods and do things on a per metric basis, allowing you better flexibility. So that's an example of uh, some of the things that you can find in the prompt underscore info dot metric view. Now let's just take a look at what's inside the prom underscore info dot label view. So you can find very similar things, things like the label key, the value column name, the ID column name, uh, and various values that this uh, label could uh, take on. Okay, so that's an overview of how to look at all of your um, metrics and labels that you've collected from the system that you're monitoring. Next, let's get into querying a particular metric and how one would do that using PromScale. So the way that you perform queries on metrics in PromScale is that you have to perform them on views, and each metric is exposed through a view named after it. So for example, in this uh, example, I'm going to be querying a 
metric called go underscore GC underscore duration underscore seconds. A lot of underscores in that name. Uh, and basically what this metric does is it measures for how long garbage collection is taking place in my Go applications. And to query it, I'm just going to be uh, querying a view named after the same metric. So it's very easy to remember where to find uh, information about uh, metrics if you remember the metric name. Okay, so uh, let's uh, take a look at the fields inside this uh, a row of uh, this metric. And you can see here that uh, there's a bunch of different fields uh, in here. The most important ones are time, uh, value, uh, as well as a series ID. Now the series ID is actually the ID that uniquely identifies the measurements label set. It enables things like efficient aggregation by series. And another uh, important field to take note of is labels. Now, each row has this labels field and you can see it's actually an array of foreign key to label key value pairs making up the label set. Uh, another thing to notice is actually all these uh, fields that end in ID. So you can see we have instance ID, job ID, K8, app ID, all these things. And one thing to notice here is that each element in this labels array is also one of the elements under the various ID fields right here. Uh, that is to say that the label array is actually the entire label set. So this is the entire label set associated with this particular measurement. And you also have each label key where applicable broken out for easy access. So you can see here, these are the only label keys that apply to this particular measurement. Okay, so now that we've learned a little bit more about the label set, let's take a look at how we can actually view it, not just in uh, an array of identifiers, but in JSON form. And to do that, I'm going to show you a sample query for how to do that. Uh, you can see here what I'm doing is just selecting the time, the value, as well as the JSON B of the labels. And this this function JSON B uh, uh, around the labels is actually what's going to show us the the JSON representation of these labels. And again, I'm just querying the metric that I'm interested in, which is the Go garbage collection duration. And you can see here the JSON B actually uh, outputs this uh, nice, uh, more easier to read format or more easier to use in some cases so that you can uh, then investigate and then pass this along to any applications that need uh, information that's going to be contained. Um, and this is the complete uh, label set uh, associated with this measurement. Okay, so now that we've seen uh, a little bit more about PROM scale and uh, how to look at metrics and labels and a little bit more about uh, the, the organization of, of the different fields. Let's get into the main event, which is the advanced analytical query that's uniquely enabled by PromScale. Now, the query that I'm going to perform is something that you cannot actually perform using PromQL, but you can perform using SQL. And again, I'm gonna be using the same metric that I've been using uh, previously, which is this uh, duration of the Go garbage collection. In particular, I want to find the 99th percentile of the maximum duration of garbage collection grouped by the individual applications that I have running in Kubernetes. So let me actually just copy and paste this query in so that we can um, analyze it line by line. So here it is. Okay, so the first thing to notice is that uh, this query is actually pretty important to see the performance of my applications. So a long garbage collection value would indicate that my application is actually experiencing performance regressions. And so this is uh, actually a pretty applicable query in the real world. The second thing is that I'm running this query and I'm grouping by the application ID, but you could actually do a very similar query and instead analyze the different versions of your application by grouping by the app version instead. So this allows you to see if new versions have improved or worse performance than the previous versions of your application. So going on to this query right now, uh, what I'm doing is just very simply selecting the app ID and then calculating the 99th percentile of the value, in this case, the, the Go uh, garbage collection duration. And here, what I'm doing in the where clause is actually finding the maximum value for the garbage collection duration in the measurement measurement period because this um, metric is actually a histogram so I'm saying 
uh, the value of the quantile ID is one in this case. And that ensures that I have the maximum value in that measurement period. And then I'm also doing some uh, logic to filter out invalid results and then grouping by app ID and ordering by the uh, percentile value. And as you can see, these are the results that I'm getting here. So I have my application Prometheus. Here I see the, the maximum um, a 99 percentile value. And then I have another application, Tobs, and so on and so forth, Redis Cart. And this is, allows me to, to uh, very succinctly see, you know, what is the uh, performance uh, with regards to the garbage collection of my different applications. Now, the thing that's actually unique about this query uh, is that it aggregates over time and series, and it gives you an accurate calculation of the percentile value for this Go garbage collection. Now, in PromQL, you can't actually get an accurate percentile calculation when you're aggregating over both time and series. But as I've just showed you, this is something that is possible using SQL and is possible using PromScale in particular. And so this is just one example of the kind of analytics that PromScale can help you perform on your Prometheus monitoring data. So before I end, I wanna show you a query that you can uh, actually perform on PromScale using PromQL. So in this case, I'm gonna switch over to Grafana. And uh, what I have here is a dashboard that is actually using PromScale um, as a data source. But in this case, the query, instead of being in SQL, is actually in PromQL. Uh, now this is actually a uh, one of the dashboards that's being auto-generated um, for me because I'm using TOBS, the observability suite for Kubernetes, the observability stack for Kubernetes rather. And uh, that auto has, uh, because I have installed uh, Prometheus, uh, Timescale, PromScale, PromLens, um, as well as uh, um, uh, PromScale as well, as well as Grafana rather. And uh, essentially the, the main thing to notice here is that we're actually writing a query in PromQL. In this case, the query is about uh, cluster memory usage in my Kubernetes cluster. But the, the PromQL is actually being executed against PromScale um, as the data source. In this case, we have a Prometheus data source which is pointing directly to the PromScale connector. So this is just another example of how the analytics, um, the analytics benefits that you can get from combining PromQL and SQL using PromScale. So now that you've uh, gotten a taste of the uh, some of the advanced analytical features and the fact that you can query in PromQL and SQL, let's take a look at where you can learn more and that's at the PromScale GitHub page. Now you can uh, learn a lot about PromScale, how it works, some details about the project, as well as some of the, the advanced benefits that you can get, things like flexible data management, to learn about features like multi-tenancy, automated data retention and downsampling. These things help with uh, handling the large volume of monitoring data that you know modern systems generate. And you can also learn about the benefits of being able to do joins, combining metrics with auxiliary data in order to create a more complete view of the system that you're monitoring. You can learn all this and more at the Timescale uh, uh, PromScale GitHub page. And, uh, and you can also uh, get instructions about how to install uh, PromScale. So do we have a, a recommended method here for Kubernetes, which is TOBS, which is the one that I've been using in the demo. But we also have Docker images, uh, binaries for Mac OS and Linux, and as well as a Helm subchart if you wanna uh, add it to your uh, charts for um, Helm in, in Kubernetes. And so uh, to learn more, check out this uh, PromScale GitHub repo. I also recommend checking out the PromScale launch blog post. You can learn more about the motivation and details about the project. This is also a very community div driven project. So please uh, give us your feedback. We're very open to hearing your thoughts and experiences with using PromScale. That's it from me today. Thank you so much for watching this demo and this introductory video about PromScale. I hope to hear about your adventures using PromScale very, very soon. Thank you again for watching uh, from Team Timescale.